Please rise as we begin on page 5 of the front of our hymn books. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.
O oh God, whose never failing providence orders all things, both heaven and earth, we humbly beseech you to put away from us all harmful things and to give us those things which are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. into 
their false doctrines. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of St. Matthew, reading verses 5 through 12. Please rise. <laughs>
fills the night. Your face and garments like the sun shines with unborrowed light. How good, Lord, to be here, yet we may not remain. But since you bid us leave this place, come with us to the plain. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you, from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text is written in the third chapter of Colossians, reading the 16th verse. We read as follows in Jesus' name. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. O Lord, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is true. Amen. This morning we look at our liturgy as we follow each non-communion Sunday. It is a good reminder to us of how precious it is, what it means to us, and why we continue to use it. I have printed out the sermon in this morning's bulletin, and there are more on the table back there if you would like to get one. Or you can follow along in the hymn book starting at page 5 in the hymn book. Please take this home and study it yourself and give it to someone else. On Sunday, we do something different than we do any day of the week. The other six days are involved around making a living, doing our responsibilities, loving God and our neighbor, and enjoying God's creation. Sunday is different. It is our entrance into the presence of Christ and the world to come. It began this morning when we got out of bed. We left our earthly temporal home and went to the house of the Lord. We leave all its troubles and temptations and receive a foretaste of heaven. And this is why it is so important for us to attend worship as much as possible tells us in Deuteronomy 32, 47, they are not just words for you, they are your life. But what do most people think about church and about attending worship service? Is it a law or a command? Is it a good work? Is it something that we do for or towards God? Or as others may think, it's only a way of getting my money, and still others think, is it necessary at all? So why are you here this morning? Do you look at it as an honor and a privilege to come here and worship God? In reality, however, it is quite different. Mark 2, 27, Jesus said, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. It was not created as a means to merit the grace of God, but it was a gift to man, a day of rest, a day when God would come to man through his word and sacrament. Worship is not about what we do for God but what He does for us. He made it holy. He blessed it. He gave it to us so that we have time and a place to hold God's Word sacred, to gladly hear and learn it. So here, God serves us with Word and Sacrament, which is our theme. And we, out of thankfulness, serve Him with praise and thanksgiving and worship. Dear fellow redeemed, in the liturgy, we are joined with the saints and the angels in the heavenly worship all around the throne of the Lamb, our Lord Jesus. The divine service begins then with the invocation in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, which tells us that we have come into the presence of the triune God. For the Father sent His Son through the Spirit so that we might live in the Spirit 
receiving the Son's divine glory of the Father. We in turn worship the Father through the Son in the Spirit. The invocation then points out that we are gathered here as baptized Christians. And in baptism, the Father receives his children and heirs. The Son washes away all our sins with his blood. And the Holy Spirit gives us new birth, working faith in the Savior in our hearts. The baptismal song stands in front of the altar indicating that we have access to God, the Father, through baptism. In the confession, then, we poor sinners confess unto God that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against Him through our thoughts, words, and deeds. We then return to our baptism. In confession, we take all of our sins and throw them back into the baptismal pond, burying them with Christ, who washes them away with his blood. In the absolution, we receive the assurance that our sins were forgiven, that was conveyed to us in our baptism, is still brought to us again. So our baptismal resurrection and our new life can arise. We are strengthened and renewed and we return to our baptism here through the means of grace. And God comes to us himself and is present with us. The introit at the part of worship, we add a psalm reading in place of the introit. The introit is a small part of the psalm, but why do we add the whole psalm? Luther put it this way. The Psalms are divided, are divine teaching and commands. They are pictures of real active saints. They are sweet and fragrant words that are spoken and prayed to God, and therefore we should use them always, always. The Psalms are called the prayer book of Christ, which we pray with him as his disciples, and in him as the body of the church. The psalm ends with the glory of Patri, glory be to the Father, to emphasize that each psalm is prayed to the triune God. In the Kyrie, Lord have mercy, sung in a humble, somber tone, speaks to our need for the Lord's help. It is a prayer for God's grace to help in every time of need, and especially as we worship. The Gloria Excelsis, Glory Be to God on High, is the song of the angels, the night of our dear Savior's birth. It is a joyful announcement of our answer to the cry for help in the Curie. Here we join with the song of the angels. We offer our praises to the Lamb who once was slain, but now lives and reigns forever. In the salutation, the Lord be with you was a familiar greeting in both the Old and New Testaments. This greeting introduces a new portion of the liturgy, the instructional segment of the service, where God meets us in his life-giving word. The salutation is a blessing over the congregation, and the Lord will be with us in his word. The response of the congregation is a plea then that the Holy Spirit is with the pastor as he proclaims the word as a mouthpiece of Christ. The calling of the day begins with the words, let us pray. It is a short prayer prayed by the pastor on behalf of the entire congregation, asking the Lord to bless his church in a specific way. Three lessons are then read in our worship service. The Old Testament lesson, which points to the coming of the Savior. The Epistle lesson, which means letter, usually one of St. Paul's letters. And then the Gospel lesson, indicating that the Old Testament is fulfilled in Christ. After the Epistle lesson, we speak the gradual, which is, is a transition between the lessons, 
followed by the singing of the threefold Alleluias, which means praise the Lord. We normally then stand for the gospel in honor of the Savior, who is present to feed us with his word, the food from heaven. Having heard and received the word of the Lord, the congregation then responds by confessing its faith in the words of the creed. In a confession of faith in which we were baptized as we praised the Holy and Blessed Trinity. With the sermon then, we reach the high point of the divine liturgy. Here the pastor is only a mouthpiece. He speaks the word of God, which is written and based on God's life-giving word. In the word, through the Holy Spirit, Jesus comes to us, feeds us, and gives us comfort, counsel, and aid. Through the word, God comes to us and is united with us in Christ's death and resurrection. Now the sermon must have two parts. The law, which shows us our sin, and the gospel, which shows us our Savior. As law, the cross shows the full extent of God's wrath because of our sin. It destroys every form of self-righteousness and often brings us to the very edge of despair. As gospel, the same cross shows the full extent of God's love. It forgives, gives righteousness and salvation, which is guaranteed to us by the resurrection. It gives us hope. It makes us glad. It shows us God's mercy. Thus, the cross in the light of Easter becomes God's means of making us alive for bringing us to faith. As Jesus suffered death to give us life, sinful man must hear the killing words of the law so that his heart is prepared for the life of the gospel. That in Jesus' death and resurrection, there is forgiveness for all and the gift of God's grace. He died to sin and arrives to a new life in faith. Yes, it brings us life where death once reigned. And here is where we, as a listener, must concentrate to make sure that we don't go home only hearing the law and leaving the worship service in despair. The sermon is for our correcting, teaching, and training, but also in the gospel is revealed the salvation Christ has won for all. The forgiveness, the righteousness, the love and salvation, which are guaranteed to us by Christ. The offertory, Creating Me a Clean Heart, is used as a response to the sermon. And in the words of the offertory, we offer our lives to the Lord as a hymn of praise to the Blessed Trinity. We then bring our offerings to the altar as a pledge our thankfulness to God. In the general prayer or the prayer of the church, we not only ask for our many needs, but we ask for the needs of the whole church. It contains many petitions for those suffering, our vocations, health, and weather, those who govern over us, and the needs of the whole church of God. It is the congregational prayer where the whole congregation stands with the pastor, and the congregation is then asked to join in the Lord's Prayer. This is the greatest of all prayers because it was given to us by our Lord Jesus as an answer to the disciples asking, Lord, teach us to pray. It is known as the model prayer, for in it is a lesson for us of how to pray. The Lord's Prayer covers all our needs of body and soul. It is concerned about our fellow man, and it includes the countless millions who do not yet know Jesus as their Savior. God has blessed the Holy Christian Church with the gift of music. The hymns we sing, the preludes, the psalms, and the chanted words are written to describe how God 
through the Holy Spirit, works in his church. As Martin Luther said in the Catechism, for all this I ought to thank and praise, serve, and obey him. And as believers, we thank and praise him with our hymns. Singing hymns gives each one of us the opportunity to exercise our work of faith to God. Singing and praising God is truly a blessing for each of us. After the singing of the third hymn, then we stand and pray the calling of the word or the closing prayer. It is a prayer in which we thank God for his holy word and that it may be used rightly among us and that through it, we, the use of it, we continue in faith and everlasting life. A promise we are given through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, who will without end. The divine liturgy then ends with the benediction. As God blesses and keeps us, he makes his face to shine upon us and is gracious unto us. And he lifts his countenance upon us and gives us peace. The whole congregation ends with the three amens to our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as we end our worship service, you and I have had a foretaste of heaven. We have met our Savior face to face. We have received the gift of word and sacrament. This is the worship service that has been passed down to us for thousands of years. It is where we see the blessed light the love and joy of God in which we are participants with all eternity. This table which is set at the very teeth of the devil, the world, and our flesh is both a source of strength and the goal of our daily pilgrimage through this valley of shadow and death. Yet now we must leave this holy world. We have seen the true light. And although we know that it is good for us to be here, we are sent out to be witnesses to that true light. As we begin the never-ending mission of our church to draw more and more people to that divine light, Jesus Christ. So why do we continue to do, use our liturgy, which so many other church bodies have left and tried to create their own? Our Lutheran hymnal and the liturgy we use has been passed down throughout the ages. It is an expression of our faith in God, which comes from the scripture and the catechism. It gives us the wonderful mysteries of God in language and rituals. It is inspired by God and uses his language. There is a great benefit in the consistency and dependability of using our liturgy and not changing it, guarding against false doctrine, such as making the worship service something we do for God instead of what God does for us. It also guards against many ideas people have that are not founded in God's Word, and the hymns that we sing are a wonderful explanation of those same truths found in God's Word. So the next time someone gives you their opinion about what church is, or how we should change our worship service to match the trends of the modern church, you can tell them the real meaning and purpose of our worship as we gather here each Sunday for our divine worship at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. May God bless you as you continue the walk in, your, in this earthly valley until the next time we meet on the Lord's day when again heaven will descend here in our worship service and we will have the taste of that divine glory which is ours forever with him in heaven. Amen. Please rise for the dust. And now may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who art worthy to be held in reverence by all the children of men, we give thee most humble and hearty thanks for the innumerable blessings, both temporal and spiritual, which without any merit or worthiness on our part thou hast bestowed upon us. We praise thee especially that thou hast preserved unto us in thy purity, thy saving word, and the sacred ordinances of thy house. And we beseech thee, O Lord, to preserve and extend thy kingdom of grace, and to grant unto the holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors, who shall preach thy word with power, and help all who hear rightly to understand and truly believe it. Send forth labors into the harvest, and open the door of faith unto all the heathen, and unto the people of Israel. In mercy, remember the enemies of thy church, who grant unto them repentance unto life. Be thou the protector and defender of thy people in all time of tribulation and danger, and may we in communion with thy church and in brotherly unity with all our fellow Christians fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow thy grace upon all the nations of the earth, especially do we entrust thee to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause thy glory to dwell among us and let mercy and truth Righteousness and peace everywhere prevail. To this end, we command to thy care all our schools, and pray thee to make them nurseries of useful knowledge and Christian virtues, that they may bring forth the wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamities by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper everyone in his appropriate calling, and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Be thou the God and Father of the widow and the fatherless children, the helper of the sick and the needy, and the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Accept, we beseech thee, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before thee, which is our reasonable service. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come doing the work thou hast given us to do while it is day before night cometh when no man can work. And when our last hour shall come, support us by thy power, and receive unto us thy everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost forever and ever. All this we pray in the prayer you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our next meeting.
Please rise for our closing prayer. Blessed Lord, who has caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, grant that we may, such wise, hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without him. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
lives. And there is a sheet on the board back there if you'd like to bring treats one of those days. Please sign up for that. We need some snacks and things for, um, for the BBS. Uh, anything else? Uh, you see there that um, Bethany Lutheran Theological Seminary uh, sent a call to the Reverend Nicholas Proch, who was in East Grand Forks and was at Bethany College teaching, and now he is accepted that call to be a professor at the seminary. So uh, we keep him in our prayers as he uh, teaches our young men um, as they go through the pastor. Any other announcements? If not, then should we join in the common table prayer and return thanks for our Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. 